Hey, good morning, class. We're going to continue our lecture today and our lesson on DNA and its structure and how it relates to protein synthesis. So as a review from yesterday, we're going to construct an explanation based on our evidence for how the structure of DNA determines um, the structure of proteins. Okay, that is our goal. Our essential question for the day, if you remember from yesterday, how does the structure of DNA relate to protein synthesis? And our objectives are going to be, we're gonna talk about understanding where DNA is located in our eukaryotic cell. We're gonna understand how the function of DNA relates to protein synthesis. And we're gonna talk about how does the structure of DNA determine the structure of proteins. Okay, so can anybody tell me, we have the slide up here from yesterday's lecture for review. Anybody want to tell me what are the parts of DNA? What makes up the structure of DNA? Alyssa. Uh, they are called nucleotides. Okay, that is part of DNA, yes, the nucleotides. Um, what do we call the twisted structure that is part of the DNA? Joe. A spiral? A spiral, it does look like a spiral. There's another name maybe for it that's very close. Yes? Um, a twisted ladder. Twisted ladder, yes, or a double helix. Okay, that's a better way to understand it. A double helix or a twisted ladder. Um, do we remember what the different colored marks are on our twisted ladder or our double helix? Yes. They're nitrogen bases. They are nitrogen bases. Okay, so our nitrogen bases match up with each other, right, in our double helix mm -hmm. to form our DNA strands. Do we remember um, what the nucleotide is consist consists of? Part of it is the nitrogen bases, mm -hmm. um, a sugar, yes, and a phosphate group. Okay, and there's one more. That's it. Nitrogen, sugar, I should have agreed. Sugar, okay, our phosphate group, and our nitrogen. Those are our. That's what makes up our nucleotide. Okay, so today we are going to, based on our essential question, okay, and our goal and our standard for the day, we are going to build a DNA model out of pipe cleaner and beads. So I'm going to hand out the instructions for the DNA model, okay, and I'm going to hand out some questions that you guys are going to do as well, a worksheet. Right now I just want you guys to go over your, your instructions. Okay, that first paragraph, let's go through it with a partner. I want you guys to underline important information in that, in that first paragraph there. And maybe highlight anything that you have questions on and then we will go through it before we start doing our model. I'm gonna read it out loud for you guys. That way you can hear it and then you can work with it with a partner. So DNA models, when isolated from a cell, a cell or stretched out, DNA looks like a twisted ladder. This shape is called a double helix, which we just reviewed as part of our review from yesterday, okay? The sides of the DNA ladder are called the backbone, and the steps, also called rungs of the ladder, are pairs of small chemicals called bases, right? That's our nitrogen bases that we just talked about. There are four types of nitrogen bases in DNA. Adenine, which is represented by the A, Cytosine, which is represented by the C, guanine is the G, and thymine is represented by a T. They form pairs in very specific ways. Adenine, or the A, always pairs with T, which is on our slide here, but I'll write it down for you guys as well, okay? A always matches with T, and guanine always matches with cytosine. So our G matches with our C. DNA is composed of the monomers called nucleotides, consisting of a phosphate group, deoxyribose, sugar molecule, and a nitrogen base. So I want you guys to work together and go through that. Underline and highlight if you have any questions. I'll give you a couple minutes to do that with your group.
Okay, so two minutes is up. Anybody want to tell me some things that they underlined in the paragraph under DNA models? I underline that it's called a double helix. Correct. Okay, that is a very important information, right? Our DNA is called a double helix and or the twisted ladder, and that's what we talked about here. Anybody else? What else did we underline that was important information? Um, I underline that A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. I'm sorry, say that one more time. I underline that A always pairs with T okay. and C always pairs with G. Got it. Sorry, I heard you say it backwards. Oh, got it. <laughs> that is correct. Okay, so A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. Anyone else? Um, I underline that nucleotides are, co are consisting of a phosphate group, a sugar molecule, and a nitrogen base. Good job. Okay, so those are all of our basic important things that we talked about in our review and in this paragraph for our introductory um, lesson. So always remember <clears throat> our pipe cleaners are going to be our pipe cleaners are going to be our twisted ladder or our double helix, okay? And our beads are gonna represent our nitrogen bases. So what we're gonna do, you guys are gonna have pipe cleaners, okay? You're gonna have beads representing the different bases. So we went through our first paragraph, we identified our important information. Okay, so now we're gonna go through our materials for the lab that we're gonna be doing with your partner. So the first thing we're gonna do, you guys are gonna have two long pipe cleaners, okay? And then we're gonna do nine short white pipe cleaners. Okay, our two long ones are gonna represent the outside of our ladder. Okay, our short ones are gonna re represent the steps of our ladder. Everybody understand that? Okay, so our long ones are the outside of our ladder. Okay, the strands and the short ones, the short white ones are the steps of our ladder. Okay, you also on your instructions say that you need 18 white beads and 18 blue beads. Those are going to be on the long part of our ladder, okay? So that's gonna be on our long pipe cleaner. Does anybody know what those white and blue beads represent? Um, in the box, it says the white beads represent deoxyribose or the mm -hmm. sugar, mm -hmm. and the blue ones represent the phosphate group. Correct. Okay, so the sugar and the phosphate groups are gonna line up on the outside of our ladder, okay? On our short steps, we're gonna talk about putting our nitrogen bases on the short step, on the white ones, which are our steps on our ladder, okay? So, going through that, you'll have those. You guys will come and get your materials from me, okay? Our long ones and our short pipe cleaners and our white and blue beads, and then I want you guys to work on putting those together. Once that's done, I'm gonna have you guys, we're gonna move into step two. Okay, which is going through our sequence. We're gonna pair up our nitrogen bases. So everybody come up and you can get your supplies. They're over here on my desk. Here you go. Thank you. Okay, so for step two, you should see sequence A, sequence B, and sequence C on your sheet. Okay, and there are nitrogen bases in each one of those sequences. We're gonna work with our partners in pairing and finding the complementary strand for each of the sequences. So remember that A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. So for example, if we have, where's my marker? If we have A, T, and G, what is our complementary strand going to be? It's gonna be T, A, C. Correct, T, A, C. Okay, because they always are combining with each other. So go with, work with your partner. Let's go through each sequence, A, B, and C, and I want you guys to find the complementary strand. I'll walk around and see if you guys need any help. Okay, just remember, and it's up here on the board, you can write it on your papers, A always matches with T, and G always matches with C. Great job. Thanks so much.
Okay, now that you guys have worked with your partners, okay, I've written our sequences on the board, right? So we have sequence A, sequence B, and sequence C. So let's go through these and match them up. I want you guys to let me know with your partner, what did you figure out? So Alyssa, you and your partner did sequence A. Let me know what it is. It's T-A-C and then U-T-A and C-B-C. -C. That's correct, okay. What about sequence B? It's T-T-G C-A-G and A-A-C. Very good. Okay, our last sequence. It's going to be A, T, C, G, G, C, and A, T, T. Very good. Okay, so now that we have matched our nitrogen bases, you guys are going to pick a sequence. A, B, or C. Okay, so we're just going to pick one sequence to build our DNA model. So you guys are going to create a DNA model with our pipe cleaners because we've already built our we already built our ladder, right? Okay, and on our short white pipe cleaners, remember that's where we're going to pair our nitrogen bases. So if you're doing sequence A, this is what you're going to follow. If you're going to do sequence B, sequence C, which you should already have filled out on your sheet. So in the box above that, under where we have materials, you will see that we have different beads. We have blue, red, teal, and pink beads. I'm sorry, we have red, teal, pink, and purple beads. Okay, our white and our blue were on our ladder, right? So I want you to look at your sequence that you chose. You're gonna find out how many beads you need of each color. Do we count just the blue letters or do we count all the letters? That's a good question. So you're going to count all the letters, right? Because we have to make matching, we're going to make one side and then we're going to make our matching side of our DNA strand. Okay, so you're going to need both. You're going to need beads that, or beads that represent one side of our ladder and we're going to need beads that represent the other side of our ladder that matches up. Okay, so for sequence A, it, well, I'm not going to tell you how many beads you're going to get because you're going to figure it out. <laughs> but remember that your A is going to be a red bead. Okay, so count all of your A's in sequence A, and that's how many red beads you're gonna need. Okay, teal is gonna represent T. Count all of your T's, and you're gonna find out how many teal beads that you're gonna need. Same thing with the pink and the purple, okay? Our G's and our C's. So I want you guys to go through your sequence, the one that you're choosing. We're gonna find out how many beads you need. You're gonna come up to my desk and I will hand out those beads. So that way I can double check that your sequences are correct and that you guys don't have any questions and that we get you the correct amount of colors that you need to build your ladder. So one more time, we're gonna make sure we get beads for one side of our ladder and the other side, okay? So we need both so that we can build our complete DNA ladder. So an example would be, let's go for... Walking, motion walking through A. So for A, okay, so for our first side of the ladder, okay, so in black here, for A we're doing red beads, correct? So we're going to need one, two, three, four red beads for A. Okay, so then we're moving on to, we'll match it with the T's. Our T is going to be teal, so we're going to need one, two, three, four teal. And if you see a pattern because A matches with T and G matches with C, you should have the same amount of both. So A and T should be the same number and G and C should be the same number. If they're different numbers, then you need to go back and look at your sequence and make sure that you did it correctly. Or I'll come around and help you guys. Okay, so for the G's, we're doing purple beads. One, two, three, four, five purple beads. Which means you're gonna need how many pink beads? Five. Five, that's correct. So five purple, five pink. Got it. I'm gonna ask a question. What color red bead are you matching up with? What color are the red beads matching up with? 
Red is matching up with teal. Red is matching up with teal. That is correct. So you always, on the other side of your red bead, you're always going to have a teal bead. Okay, if you have pink and purple beads, they're also going to be matching. So you should never have a pink and red matching up together, and you should never have a purple and teal matching up together. All right, so find out, let's find out how many beads you need. Come up to the desk, I'll grab them for you guys. And then we'll check your sequence and make sure you have the correct amount of beads. Okay, so before we build our DNA models, right, you guys have all of your supplies. You have your long pipe cleaner, you have your short pipe cleaners, you have your blue and white beads, which represent what? What do our blue and white beads represent? The sugar and phosphates. The sugar and phosphates, okay, and those are going on what part of our ladder? The long part. The long part of our ladder. Okay, and we have our short white pipe cleaner, which is representing our steps. Okay, and you have your beads that represent your bases. So before we start doing that, I have a sheet that I handed out to you guys, the DNA models. Okay, we're gonna go through these, some of these questions and I want you guys to discuss with your partner first and then we'll answer it together as a group. Okay, so I'll give you some time to do that. I can check my time. Okay, so coming back to our questions, let's do some reviewing. What do our long pipe cleaners represent in our model? The long pipe cleaners represent the backbones of the DNA. That's correct, okay? The backbones of the DNA, also known as the twisted ladder or the double helix. <clears throat> Our blue and white beads represent? Um, the white beads represent the sugar and the blue represents the phosphate group. Okay, so phosphate and our sugar. Okay, those are what our blue and white beads represent. <clears throat> what are the red beads? Do our red beads represent? The red beads are adenine or A. Okay, and A. And what color bead does it pair with? Teal. Which represents? Thymine. Thymine, right? So A always matches with T. And what do our pink beads represent? Um, cytosine. Okay, and our purple beads? Guanine. So G always matches with C. Okay, so we know what our beads are representing. So you basically, what are our four nitrogen bases of DNA? The ones we just named, so adenine. Adenine. Uh, thymine. Thymine, that's our A and T again. Cytosine. Cytosine. And guanine. And guanine, okay, and that is our G and C. And how do they pair, Alyssa? A always pairs with T and C always pairs with C. That is correct, okay? A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Okay, does it, do we know what holds our nitrogen bases together? We talked about this yesterday in lecture when we were going over the structure of DNA, but what holds our nitrogen bases together? Um, a hydrogen bond. Correct, okay, the hydrogen bond. So we have our two strands of DNA and it's held together by the hydrogen bond. Very good. Okay, so let's look at number three. Why is there the same number of red beads on your model as there are teal beads? Tell me again, what do our red beads represent? Red represents adenine. A. Okay, red represents our adenine. Where's my red? Okay, so this is red. And what are our teal beads? Um, T or thymine. Okay. T or thymine. So when we went over our sequences, when I showed you guys what the sequences were, okay, and we matched up our nitrogen bases, we had red and teal beads. Just pretend this is teal, it's blue. And I told you that we, if you have four red beads, how many teal beads do you need to have? You should have four. You should have four, okay? So always, your teal and your red are always gonna match up. So if you have four red beads, you're always gonna have four teal beads because that's gonna be the flip side of the complementary strand. Same thing goes for G and C. Okay, what color was C? What um, color were our C beads? C Cytosine? is pink. That's purple. <laughs> okay, pink. And what about our guanine? Purple. Is purple. So if we have, if we have six purple beads, how many pink beads are we gonna have? We should have six. Six, okay, so remember that the numbers are, for. However many purple beads you have, you're going to have the same number of pink 
for however many red beads we have, we're gonna have the same number of blue. And then we'll talk about later how we're actually gonna build our model and how we're gonna match up those bases on the ladders.